This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. And so we move to the final statement of Jesus on the cross that may have actually been part of this previous statement of it is finished. And that is the word fulfillment. Fulfillment. Luke 23, 46 says it this way. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, his last gasp of energy, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Jesus cried out his final words on the cross, words that fulfill all the prophecies of time, all the hopes of the lost, the whole condemnation, condemnation of Satan, and the victory for every believer who trusts in the saving redemptive power of Jesus' death on the cross. That's what that cry symbolized. All of that together, all of the prophecies of time were fulfilled at that point. All of the hopes of the lost were consumed right in that particular, in that particular event. There is hope in the death of Jesus Christ. The full condemnation of Satan happened at that point on the cross. The victory for every believer who trusts in the saving, redemptive power of Jesus' death on the cross was fulfilled. There is victory for the Christian in the cross. Jesus had come from heaven, and to heaven he would return. But first he had to die physically. He had previously said that nobody could take his life from him, but he had to die physically. So what was happening? He was, well, let me explain it this way. John 10, verses 17 and 18 say it this way. For this reason, the Father loves me, Jesus was saying, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. Jesus knew he was going to rise from the dead, but he knew that he was going to have to die. And he did that willingly. I lay down my life. I'm doing it. It's my choice. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. The question has been asked before, you know, what could you accomplish if you knew that you couldn't fail? If you knew that you could, anything you accomplished that you could not fail, what could you accomplish? Well, this is what happens here. Jesus knew that he would not fail. He could not. The only way he could not fail was to not die. He was doing that willingly. And by dying, he knew he would not fail. Listen to me. When you go through the issues that you have to go through in life, when God has called you to your life and you're being obedient to him and you're delighting in him and you're letting him accomplish what he wants to accomplish in and through your life, no matter the consequences, the circumstances, the difficulties, the suffering that you are going through, you cannot fail. As long as you're focused and obedient on the Lord. Can't. Yeah, you're going to go through some difficulty. Jesus went through death, but he did not fail. You will go through difficulties. Sometimes it seems like forever. But compared to eternity, it is not. And you're going to go through some circumstances in your life, but trust me on this, when you are obedient to the Lord, focused on Him, listening to Him, letting Him lead you, letting Him accomplish what He wants to accomplish in and through your life, when you are doing it that way, you cannot fail. You will not fail. So this was a willful, voluntary act by Jesus, knowing that he would not fail. He consciously gave his life for you and for me. He understood that he was the ultimate sacrificial lamb that the Old Testament had spoken of. He knew that. Never before had Jesus stood alone, forsaken by God his Father. Yet, although forsaken, he was still carrying out his Father's will and purpose. Did you get that? Even though Jesus was forsaken, even though he sensed this forsaken, that God had heaped all the sin of the world on him and couldn't even bear to look at him, even though he was going through that difficulty, he knew he was doing the Father's will. And he couldn't fail. He wouldn't fail. Although forsaken, he was carrying out his Father's will and purpose in becoming the atonement for our sin. These are incredible words of hope and comfort when you think about it. 
Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It's just a way of saying Jesus knew that even though he was being separated from the Father because of the sin of the world, he could still trust the Father to restore him and bring him back from that separation. He knew he could. He knew he would not fail. He was willing to pay the price because he would not fail. Let me ask you something. Are you willing to pay the price that God asks of you, knowing that you will not fail? Knowing that you will not fail? Are you willing to pay that price? Are you willing to accomplish that, knowing that as long as you're doing it God's way, doing it God's way, as long as you're in God's will, you will not fail? And if the Father would restore His Son, who became the sin of the world on the cross, the Father would restore His Son, who became the sin of the world on the cross, He most certainly will restore you if you give yourself to Him. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class,